All right, so welcome back. Today in this video, we're gonna be looking at some ethics and professional practice problems. And we're gonna be focusing specifically on professional liability. So when it comes to liability and professional liability, someone has to get held responsible or liable if something goes wrong. So if a bridge falls down, somebody, has to get held responsible unless it's like some natural disaster, right? Which you may not be able to control, but you still want to be able to prove that before different parties are not held for people not to be held liable. So um, let's look at some practice problems that deal with liability um, so that we can make sure that we master or easily pass this portion when we get questions on it for the exam. All right, so first practice problem says, plan stamping is the term, as the term is commonly encountered in consultative engineering refers to the what? Okay. So A, illegal action of signing off on a project that you did not design or check. So plan stamping, they're basically giving you a term and saying, like, what does this mean, you know, in the, in the real world, right? So is it the illegal action of signing on a project that you didn't check or sign? If I'm just plan stamping, just putting my stamp on a plan, I would say that that is, I might... I might would say that that one's correct. Um, is it the illegal action of signing off on a project that you did not design, but did check? So if you've checked it, then, and then you stamped it, I don't see anything wrong with that. And I don't see that being necessarily illegal. Uh, for example, you may be a project manager and you may have your designers or CAD designers designing it, and then you go back through and back check their calculations, and then you put your stamp on it. Or you may be the owner who has your PE, who has project managers and has CAD designers doing all that part of the work for you. And then you go through, you back check everything. And so I don't see that being illegal. So. We're gonna say no. So that's wrong. Illegal action of signing off on a project you did not design or check, but for which you are not accepting any compensation. So it's illegal action of signing off on a project you did not uh, design or check, but for which you are not accepting any compensation. That one's in question. You're not accepting any compensation. Didn't design it, you didn't check it, you're not accepting any payment. So I'm gonna say no still. Okay, the legal action. <laughs> of signing off on a project you did not design, but for which you are taking full responsibility. So uh, these are legal, legal ways. And so plan stamping uh, is something that is illegal. And, you know, it means you basically sign something and haven't checked it, haven't looked over it. Um, and normally there's some sort of compensation that goes along with it. So for example, if I have a friend, uh, let's say he's a, he's somebody who graduated with me when we were studying civil engineering, I have a friend, I'm uh, designing a project independently 
I have my PE and my friend, he has his PE, or I mean, let's say I don't have my PE, but my friend has his PE. So I'm designing everything, doing all the work for this particular client. And then I send it to him to sign off for me. Well, and I'm like, I'll pay you this amount, you know, so that we have it stamped so that we can get the project approved by the city or whatever. If my friend doesn't look over it, doesn't check it and takes my money, he's just plan stamping and, you know, putting his signature on it and he will be held liable. And this is illegal, right? So you don't want to just be getting used um, for your uh, stamp, right? So if you get your PE, um, you not you don't want to be that person who is just being used for their signature um, and not checking over things and you know, but just because you're still going to be held liable for for this stuff. So just something to keep in mind. This is something that you're going to need and uh, to have to have prior knowledge on. So if you didn't know what this was, good. I'm glad I can uh, share what it is with you. So, all right, let's look at number two. So number two says a licensed structural engineer working on working for an engineering company approves the plans for an overhead walkway made of steel. Okay. In the atrium of a condo. During construction, the installers working for a construction firm did not correctly follow the installment plans, and the walkway collapses due to an incorrect installation. Who is the primary party held liable for the accident? All right. A, the steel company who fabricated the beams. Not their problem. They made the steel. They sold it to... Uh, an engineering company, construction company, and that still is out of their hands. Okay. The construction company. No, not the construction company. And I'll tell you why after we go through all of them. Uh, C. The engineering design company. Yes. Design company, they're over everything. Um, and then D, the county building inspector. So no county building inspector may come out there once a year, twice a year. So it's not their, their fault. Um, they may not have even gotten out there at this point so really uh your answer is going to be the engineering design company now you could argue that it's the construction company but when they look over this they they say okay who um signed off on these things and so in this particular case the construction company is not the one signing off um you know on these, they're not the ones signing off on how it's built. The structural engineer, it, however, is, right? So they're the ones going out there, supposed to be checking, back checking things, signing off, making sure things are constructed properly. So the, the design company is gonna be the primary party that is held liable. Now, if they, go in there and say, you know, our steel guy, he checked it, looked it over it. All the calculations are correct. The construction company still may not be held liable because they are the ones, uh, the, the engineer is always the, the last person to kind of check. And so this may vary from place to place. So, you could really argue construction company and engineering design company, but most of the time on projects, anything goes wrong, they're going to the design company. That's the primary party that's going to be held liable. And then from there, they can drill down exactly who 
who it was or what was faulty or whatever it may have been, but that is our answer, C.